Merry Christmas, everybody. Welcome to Hessel Church. I didn't hear Merry Christmas from you guys. Merry Christmas. There we go. Hey, kids, are you ready to open some presents this season? Yeah. You guys sound excited, but before we can do that, we have a very special program that we've got for you guys. So let's put our hands together as we sing Go Tell It on the Mountain. something before you go? But mom, I really want to have my friends before school starts. Morty McSky, you get in here right now. Okay, mom. What do you need, mom? Can you grab the nativity box for me? I can't reach it. Sure, no problem. So why do we set up a nativity? Because it tells us the story of Christmas. Here, let me put these cinnamon rolls in the oven and I'll show you. Okay, so first we have the shepherds and the shepherds represent ordinary people, but God used the shepherds near Bethlehem to be the first ones to witness the heavenly announcement of Christ's birth. 
Then we have the angels, and the angels were the ones that told the shepherds about the Messiah being born. Um, let's see, next we have the wise men, and the wise men came from the east, and they knew all the Old Testament prophecy about the Messiah being born and about God sending a savior into the world. So when they heard about Jesus' birth, they traveled for miles and miles, bringing him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And then we have Mary, and that's who God chose to be the mother of Jesus. And we have Joseph, who was a simple carpenter, and that's who God chose to be the earthly father of Jesus. And then we have the very most important piece. Oh, my cinnamon rolls, I'll be right back. Mom, I gotta go, I'm gonna be late for school. Okay, no problem, have a good day. Morty didn't get a, a chance to see what that last nativity piece was all about, but I have a feeling we might find out tonight. Well, right now, we're going to sing some Christmas carols, and I want to hear from you kiddos. I want to hear what your favorite Christmas carol is. So I'm going to come out here. Kids, raise your hands if you have a favorite Christmas carol. I see, I see a couple back here. I see one back here. What is your favorite Christmas carol? Winter Wonderland. Winter Wonderland. Winter Wonderland. I think we might be able to do that. What do you think? Do you think we can do that, Paul? I think we could do it. Let's all sing it together right now. Here we go. Sleigh bells ring. Sleigh bells ring. Are you listening? In the lane, snow is glistening. A beautiful sight. We're happy tonight. Walking in a winter wonderland. Gone away is the bluebird. Here to stay. You can do the job when you're in town. Later on, we'll conspire as we dream by the fire to face our afraid the plans that we made. Walking in a winter wonderland to face, to face our afraid. Let's do a big Elvis ending. Here we go. Let's go over here. Let's see. Does any are there any other kids over this direction that might oh I might have to pick my own kid. I'm sorry guys, I gotta do it. Here we go. What's your favorite Christmas song? Rudolph. Rudolph? Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer? You guys wanna sing Rudolph? Maybe she can help me here. You wanna do it? You know Dash, Dancer, and Prancer and Vixen. Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen. But do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Everybody, here we go. Rudolph. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you would even say,
got time for one more. One more. One more kid. Oh, how about two kids that look the same? Here we go. Look at these twins. What's your favorite Christmas? Jingle bells. Jingle bells? Jingle bells. You guys want to do jingle bells? I think we can do jingle bells. Here we go. Dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh. O'er the fields we go, laughing all the way. Bells on bobtails ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleighing song tonight. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells. change it up here. I think we need to get a little funky with it. How does that sound? What do you guys, and you think we get funky? Oh, you guys feeling that? I want to see a little bit of dancing with this song. Here we go. Should we sing dashing? Get funky with it. There we go. Dashing music. Dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh. O'er the fields we go. We are in the country, so we should probably play the best genre there is. Let's do it country. You guys want to do a country? All right, and if we do this, I need to hear twang in everybody's voice, or it's not going to work, okay? Let's do it. There we go. I want to see it. Here we go. Dashing through the snow. Dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh. Over the fields we go, laughing on the Sing a sleigh song to me. Yeah. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Oh, what fun it is to ride. Sing along with us. 
Professor Brown, I just want to say Merry Christmas one last time before the break. Oh, you know what? Thank you so much. Uh, Merry Christmas to you, and please tell your family I said hello. Thank you. Hey, Professor Brown, what's this weird-looking fridge thing? Fridge? There's not a fridge in the... Oh, yeah, that. That is not a fridge, uh, believe it or not. I've actually been working on a device so I can go back in time. Back in time? How far back in time can it go? I don't know. I could probably go back in time even to when Pastor Rich had hair. <laughs> oh, so you mean way back in time. Yes, precisely. Way back in time. It's almost done. I was actually going to finish it over the break. Just needs a few more things. If you want, I could show you how to... Whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't touch it. Don't touch any buttons. But if you want, I can show you how it works. Uh, it's actually surprisingly spacious in here. Yeah, take a look. Wow. It's way more spacious in here than I thought. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, uh, my whole life everything has been too small. Honda Civic, salad forks, phones, clothes. So I thought, you know, if I'm going to make something for me, I'm going to make it nice and spacious. Wait Whoa. a second. What's happening? This What's is, happening? It's not supposed to work What's yet. What's going on? Someone must You're have pushed the button outside. What the heck is going on? If we get eaten by a dinosaur, I'm going to be so mad at myself. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, I don't know what time travel is supposed to feel like, but it's not supposed to feel like that. Are you okay? I feel like I ate bad chicken. Oh, I just need a minute. But where are we? Great Scott, Morty, it's a sign. But what year is it? Year zero? Fields of Bethlehem? W wait a minute, I, I think we went back in time to when Jesus is born. But, but, but hold on, in, in the story there's... I thought there were supposed to be shepherds watching their flocks at night. I thought there were supposed to be shepherds. Oh, all right. Okay. I, I, I thought the shepherds were supposed to be silently watching their flocks by night. Professor Brown, these shepherds look like the ones in my mom's nativity set. Exactly. Although, I hope the ones in your mom's nativity don't smell like this. It's kind of like wet wool and animal. Hey, you are the cutest shepherds I've ever seen in your life. Um, I've always wondered, what is it like being a shepherd? Smelly. Smelly? Yeah, that makes sense. That checks out. Sheep are basically like large guinea pigs that just wander the fields. Um, I... Do the sheep do sheep ever bite? Yes. yes. 
That makes sense. My sister was a biter and she had teeth. Hey, um, I was wondering, uh, could you guys really quickly point to your parents? You guys are the best shepherds ever. Parents, you guys did a great job. These are the cutest shepherds I've ever seen in my life. Give them a round of applause. You guys are amazing shepherds. Now, in the story of Christmas, have you guys seen anything crazy happen tonight? No? No? Yeah, what do you guys count when you try and go to sleep at night? Sheep. Sheep, that makes sense. I should have known that. But, like, you haven't seen anything crazy, but, like, have you seen anything, like, what about, like, angels? There's supposed to be angels that appear and sing to you guys. Have you guys seen that? No. Well, that's strange. And in the same oh. region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign unto you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest, highest and, on and on the earth, earth peace among those, those with whom he is pleased. Oh, so there's the angels. Those were the angels my mom was talking about. Yeah, exactly. Hey, shepherds, I got one more question for you. Can you please point us? Hello. Can you please point us in the direction of Bethlehem so we can go see the So, oh, You guys are as good at directions as I am. Someday there's going to be this thing called Google Maps. It'll change your life. So, yeah, you know what? We need to go see the Savior. But, Professor Brown, who is the Savior? The Savior. The Savior is Jesus. Jesus is the Savior. Jesus is the Savior? Yeah, he, he's the Son of God. Come on, let's go. Let's, you know what? Uh, we're just... I don't know sometimes what I'm doing up here. <laughs> Come on, let's go. We'll use Google Maps. You know what? Yeah, Google Maps works great. This will save us eight minutes, and it'll take us by three Starbucks. Sweet. <laughs> Those kiddos are kind of cute. Well, now we get the opportunity to sing a little bit more, so let's go ahead and let's sing Angels We Have Heard on High. Oh 
When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary, Joseph, and the baby lying in a manger. I can't believe Christmas is literally today and Starbucks already has the holiday mugs. That is incredible. You know what? This is great. Um, I feel like we kind of went in a big circle, but we got here and we beat the shepherd. So that's, there's that. Is that Mary and Joseph over there? Oh, okay. So yes, that's Joseph. That's Mary. And that little baby right there, that's, that's Jesus, the savior. But how can he be a savior? He's just a baby. So I want to ask you a question here. How many of you have gone shopping and shopped for something either online or in a store in the last 30 days or so? Let me see your hands. Raise your hands. There we go. Okay, that's a good thing. Do you, I want to give you, I went to the uh, National Retail Association and they told me online that there would be between, uh, I got to get the right number here, 942 and 960 billion dollars dollars spent on Christmas in the United States this year. $960 billion. We treat that like monopoly money. I want you to know something. Uh, that is more than the gross national product of 173 nations. And we're going to spend that on, on Christmas. We kind of treat that, that number like a monopoly money or something like that. Let me tell you something. If you were to count to 960 billion and you used one second to count every single number, it would take you 30,514,940 years to count to that number. And we spend that on Christmas. Check out this. This is what we spend on wrapping paper and little gift bags for Christmas. $2.6 billion on wrapping paper and gift bags. And we say that the economy's tough, right? Now, there's some people who hear this and they think, piously, Christmas is not about presents. I actually went to a website that's for Gen Zers, which is basically teenagers to late 20-year-olds, and it said there was an article that was uh, there this last week. I looked at it. It was six ways to celebrate Christmas without gifts. I didn't even read it. That's ridiculous. I mean, come on. 2,000 years ago, the greatest gift that was ever given was given by God to mankind. 2,000 years ago. I want to read to you a familiar passage of Scripture that many of you might have even memorized somewhere along the way. It's found in John 3.16. And it says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. I'm going to ask you three quick questions. I'm not going to be up here very long. Here's the first question. 
why did God give the gift? Why did God give the gift? It says, for God so loved the world. Who's the world? That's us. That's you and me. That he gave. The word there, loved, uh, we, we kind of diminish the value of the word love. I mean, somebody says, I love pizza. I love cheeseburgers. I love my wife. I love, my, I love Christmas. In, in the Greek, when the Bible was written, all, there were several words that were used for love. One of them was phileo. It's where you, we get the, the word uh, Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Phileo is a brotherly love. In all the Bible, not one time does God say that he brotherly loves us. He instead uses another word called agape. And agape is the highest level of love that, in, that you could ever have. It's finding pleasure in someone as an act of the will. I choose to find pleasure in you. And that's the word it is used for God. For God chose to find pleasure in you. And he didn't just love you. Notice the adverb before the word loved. It says, so loved, so gloriously and transcendently loved you that he gave. See, I want you to understand something. The Bible says here that God made you he, that he made you and loves you. And the reason that he made you is so he, to, to love you and that you could live out your life in an overflow in a relationship with him. You ever, you ever wonder why? Or ever wonder, you know, what's the meaning of life? I mean, am I just supposed to live here? And is it all about work, relationship, travel? Nothing, nothing's wrong with those things. But it, when you do those things at the end, you're kind of going, there's got to be more. That's because God made you to love him and to be in relationship with him. He also made you so that you could live. And the way that you can live to the height of how he intended is in a relationship with him. Now, let me ask you a question. There's a, but there's a problem that comes along. And let me show you a verse, Romans 3.23. It says this, for all... You know what all means in the Greek? All. Yeah, exactly. It means the same thing. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Not only have we sinned in the past, we're sinning in the present. And we fall short of God's standard. Let me ask you a question. How many of you, tell the truth, how many of you have at one point or another told a lie? Raise your hand. Okay? Put your hands down. If you didn't just raise your hand, you can put it up now. Okay? <laughs> I know how it works. How many of you, at one point or another, took something that didn't belong to you? Maybe it was from your mom's purse. Maybe it was from a, an office. You took a pen from home from the office. At one point or another, took something that didn't belong to you. Raise your hand. Okay, put your hands down. This is a great place for me to preach because I am in the presence of liars and thieves. <laughs> this is a great moment right here, right? See, see all of us have sinned. We all have missed the mark. And you say, well, Rich, if, we're all, if we've all done it, what's the big deal? Well, here's the big deal. In Romans 6, 23, it says this. It says this. The wages of sin is death. See, sin always promises life, but it always brings death to you and me. And so 2,000 years ago, God sent a gift because we were in a situation that we couldn't get out of ourselves. Here's the second question I want to ask. What is the gift? He gave his only son. Christmas is the glorious celebration of God's gift. Jesus came into this world to do something for us that we could never do for ourselves. Matter of fact, when the angel spoke to, to Joseph, Jesus' earthly father. He said this in Matthew 1, 21. He said this, She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will, what? Save his people from their sins. Jesus, God, became man, fully God, fully man, in order, took on humanity. He lived a sinless life to be, so that he could be our substitute. A lot of people get the manger scene and we get excited about that, but that's not the end of the story. The story goes on. It says that Jesus went to the cross, a perfect human being, and he died on the cross. And in that moment, God poured out his wrath, the wrath that you and I deserve. 
Not on us. He poured it out on Jesus. And Jesus died and he didn't stay dead. Three days later, he rose from the dead as evidence of the fact that God the Father had accepted the sacrifice so that you and I could be reconciled back to God. I only read part of Romans 6, 23 before. I'm going to read the rest of it. For the wages of sin is death, but listen to this. The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Don't tell me Christmas is not about gifts. God gave us a gift. How, how many of you like gifts? How many like to receive gifts? Okay, leave, leave your hands up here. Hey, there we go. Hey, leave, your, leave them up. Don't put them down. Okay. Let me, I'm looking around. Will you pass right, right here? Okay, now I'm going to give this. This is a gift. What do you have to do to get it? You're just taking it out of my hand, aren't you, Sammy? I see that, what you're doing there. Okay, all she had to do is receive it. And if she had to work for it, it wouldn't be a gift. Sammy, that's yours. You get to go home with that, okay? If, 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 you, have to, if you have to work for it, it's not a gift. See, religion has always been adding something to... Look at John 3.16. I think that's the next one I've got here. For, who, for God so loved the world that he gave his... He gave as a gift. His only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Whoever what? Believes. If you had to do something, it's not a gift. I'm going to ask my friend Zach to bring me something out here for a moment. And it's just going to be a second. I, I, I looked this thing up. It, this thing says on the side that it can hold 350 pounds. I don't weigh quite that much. 350 pounds. Now, this is what many of you guys do. I believe that that ladder could hold me. I, I believe that Jesus could and can and will save me if I ask. I, I believe that. And that's where it stops. But let me show you what it looks like to really believe. So here it is, right? This is believing. And if this ladder falls right now, Somebody else is going to be doing the next service, and it's not going to be me, okay? Well, what's it mean? It means you put your faith and your trust that whoever believes, this is believing. It's got to move from our head to our heart, where we trust God with what he's provided for us, with salvation. Which brings me to my, my third and final question. Have you ever received God's gift? I didn't, no, notice I didn't say, do, have you ever gone to church? I didn't say, have you ever been baptized? You'll notice I didn't say, have you ever put money in the plate? Have you ever received the free gift and committed your life to him? I'm going to ask you to just bow your heads right where you are this morning, this afternoon. Now, let me tell you something. If, if you, well, your eyes are closed and your head is bowed. If you are, have already trusted Christ, let me just ask you to pray for other people in this room right now who need to get right with God because sin has separated them from God. Will you just pray for them? And if you have never entered into a relationship with God, let me tell you something right now. This is the reason for which you were born. is to be in love relationship with God through faith. And, and if I want to encourage you right now to receive the greatest gift this Christmas, which is salvation. You, just, you can do that really quickly. There's nothing magical about this prayer that I'm going to pray, but I'd like you to encourage you, if, it's, if it expresses what's in your heart, let me encourage you to just pray it quietly. 
Just pray. Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner and separated from God. I believe, Jesus, that you didn't just come as a baby, but you're God. You went to the cross for my sins, to pay for my sins. And then you rose again. I believe that. And I receive this gift. And today I commit my life to you. I'm not going to be perfect, but God, I pray that you would help me live for you. Help me to, to learn about you and to grow. In Jesus' name, amen. So many people miss the fact that Jesus, that Christmas is not just about a baby in a manger. So many people think it's just, oh, about wise men and Mary and Joseph. It's not. It's about this one who went to the cross the truth be known is that Christmas it's all about the cross Just about the manger where the baby lay. It's not all about the angels who sang for him that day. It's not just about the shepherds or the bright and shining star. It's not all about the wise men who traveled from afar. It's about the cross, it's about my sin, it's about how Jesus came to be born once so that we could be born again. It's about the stone that was rolled away so that you and I could have real life someday. It's about the cross. It's not just about the presents underneath the tree. It's not all about the feelings that the season brings to me. It's not just about coming home to be those you love. It's not all about the beauty in the snow I'm dreaming of. It's about the cross. It's about my sin. It's about how Jesus came to be born once so that we can be born again. It's about the should have been me. It's about the stone that was rolled away so that you and I could have real life someday. So that you and I could have real life someday. 
it's about the I, I get it. This little baby's going to grow up and give his life for me so that my sins can be forgiven and I can have a relationship with God. A lot of people miss this. This child right here is, is what Christmas is all about. Come on, Morty, we got to get going. You know what? There's, there's one other thing I got to do real quick. Go ahead and hop in the time machine. Don't push any buttons. I will be right back. Hey, I'm so sorry to ruin the moment, but if I could get a selfie, it would be the best thing in the world. <laughs> just, just look in this black box and smile. Um, my followers are not going to believe this is your son. He's going to know a thing or two about followers. Am I right? That doesn't mean anything yet. Anyway, you guys are the best. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas. That'll mean something someday too. You guys are the best. Love you. Bye. Was that a wise man? Definitely not. <laughs> well, it's been fun for us to have this time together with you this afternoon. I just want to say a couple of things as we close here. Number one is, um, if you prayed that prayer with me, let me just be the first one to say welcome to the family. Uh, there'll be a lot more that you'll learn along the way, but the most important thing is you've begun through faith. You've received the gift. And as you leave here today, I, I've got a little booklet I'd like to give to you. Matter of fact, as you leave here, as soon as this is over, there'll be people as you exit the doors that would just be standing there and they love to give this to you. Just say, hey, I'd like one of these. That's it. If you prayed that today for the first time, just say, hey, can I have one of those? They won't stop you. They won't ask for your passport or you won't ask for your, your social security number. They'll just let you go. But this has some information that I think that you'll find really meaningful. And I want to give this to you. The second thing I want to let you know is after this is over, we're all going to be gathering on the patio. It's the first time uh, we've ever used our patio, new patio for a new event. <laughs> And there's activity for kids out there. We've got food out there. We've got a photo booth. We've got all kinds of fun things. And you're more than welcome to just hang out and just enjoy some, some Christmas fun out there afterwards as well. We do want to wish you a Merry Christmas. And if you ever, if you're not a part of our church, and you're just checking out churches, if you ever are looking for a church, we'd love to have you ch come check us out sometime. We, there's always room for more in our church. Now, we have a tradition here at Hessel Church, and that is that uh, we like to do a little candle lighting. And so during this last song, we are going to light those tea candles, tea lights, and uh, you're going to, at some point, uh, why don't we all stand up right now? We're going to light those candles, and we're going to sing the last song. And at one point, TJ is going to ask us to just raise them up high. You don't have to leave them up the high the whole time, but at one point, we'll all raise them up together, high together. But as we sing this wonderful Christmas song, Oh Holy Night.
Merry Christmas. You guys have a good rest of your holiday.